So welcome back to National Gaming. Today I'll be showing you a Terran strategy for all those StarCraft 2 players out there, especially the Terrans if you are struggling with an easy strategy for uh, closing games out early. Uh, this game I'm going to show you is a replay of which I played uh, on the, I believe, uh, Platinum ladder rank somewhere in that region. I believe this strategy is actually good enough for you guys to go uh, till at least Platinum 1 and maybe even beyond Platinum somewhere in the Diamond Leagues. I believe it's a really solid strategy. It closes games out really early. If you, uh, uh, if you practice it a bit, then you'll be able to work your way around stuff that can be countered. Uh, this is a really good strategy, I believe. Um, I invented it myself, actually, because I haven't seen it anywhere. Perhaps there are people out there that have done it, but, but I haven't seen it yet. I think it's a good strategy. I'm not a pro player. I'm a medium player. I sit usually around Diamond League myself. I'm learning a lot from Loco actually, Loco TV, and I try to watch uh, the pro gamers out there. But uh, let's get into it. So this is my vision. Uh, I'm going to switch to everyone's vision. My opponent is in the right, bottom right. His name is Akerkenein Kakok, whatever that means. Uh, Nashnia, I am Nashnia of course. I'm just going to swap through my own vision. What you do at the start is you build a supply depot of course. Because you're going to need supply otherwise you'll be supply blocked. At the same time you'll be we building this refinery. Because you need, to get that, you need to get that gas going really early you know. So use the supply depot, build it right there for the wall off. And here we go with the barracks. And once this one finishes up the refinery you'll see that i'm stocking it up with three out of three workers so now that the barracks is on the way as well i'm going you're going to keep pushing scvs because you need that solid economy early up you go for the second refinery now because it's really important to get that up uh, what i usually do sometimes i don't know if i'm doing it in this video but what i usually do sometimes is i halt the progression on this barracks Look what I'm doing right now, I halt it, then I just put up a little bit of it, just to complete the wall off. Usually I do that before the scout has reached my base, but in this case I'm doing it now. Uh, this asshole is actually attacking my barracks, so I'm going to be a little bit delayed. Uh, normally I solve this with just sending one of the SCVs right in at the start. It's alright though, I'll make up for the last time, you'll see that in a bit. Uh, so usually you can just uh, solve this by sending an SCV right at the spot and having that wall off done earlier. Just yeah, just take that as an example. You keep building up this economy. You have three out of three gas, and once it finishes up the barracks, you will instantly go for the factory. Now I'm going to speed it up a bit because I wanted to make this a quick guide for you guys. Uh, you also, on 13 out of 16 minerals, you go for that upgrade on the command center. Uh, I put this up for a while, just to make command a start, because upgrade. I wanted to get my Add extra minerals going and my uh, supply was still fine. So, I just made a start here, and now this one is going to build Starport right after the factory. Uh, once you have enough supply you got your economy going and stuff you'll be starting to pump out three i mean two marines at the same time now this one's going to finish up quickly i'm going to speed up just a bit have these guys patrol because of reaper play you never know what you're gonna get in this case uh it was uh, obvious that we had a uh, uh, terran against us so just keep pumping those marines and have them on the uh, patrol Sometimes it will be good to put them here as well because of the Oracle gameplay and uh, we are at three and a half minutes So an Oracle could possibly be coming right now after you finish up the starport Of course attach a reactor to it as well You also need a reactor attached to the factory because you're going to build two of these cyclones right away And you keep producing these Marines Now it won't be long from this point on uh, I actually don't use an extra command center at this moment i'm not going to build it because i need my solid economy i'm stocking up on, on resources right now because once this reactor finishes up the first thing i'm going to do is going to build two of these liberators you need those liberators because they make part of your solid strategy that you're going to put out there keep building one supply depot at a time as you can see uh, I'm, I'm staying ahead of my supply cap a little bit every time so now i have 
uh, approximately 10 marines which is good you need about 10 8 or 10 marines and two cyclones and when these two liberators finish up you're going to go across the map with them um, the best thing for your wall i believe this is the best way to put up a wall because if uh, your opponent has like um, bane links then you have a second layer of the supply depots behind it liberators are finishing up and now moving across the map with actually an additional four action. marines so i now have about 14 marines if i'm correct yeah this is 14 marines two cyclones 14 marines two liberators and i keep producing and having my rally points set up here so at this point uh we keep sending in troops and with the two liberators we got so much covering fire there won't be uh, a possibility for him to shut this down now he's actually sending these two which is okay by me uh, i might actually build some some missile turrets later but as you can see because i noticed that he sent those two out i know that there's nothing he can do because he mainly focused on banshees which are expensive which uh, take some time and take a lot of tacking so that's just, that's just the moment at which i moved in and started closing out the game really early he realizes it i can tell you that i got a missile turret right here put two of these vikings up in the air because i noticed it right from the bat um, what you usually do is put these two up our base is under siege and that'll be it he's going to close he's going to leave the game soon because he realizes that he's been bested uh, this is the strategy that i've been using for a, a lot of games now i think about 20 maybe even 30 games it got me up to uh, platinum one really fast uh, like i said i'm also a protos player so i didn't move on beyond this uh, which means that, um, that I might even be able to get higher with it. As you can see back home, yeah, he's, he, he has stealth and stuff, but uh, I'm, I'm, I'm actually putting up another additional missile turret right now. So if he decides to get near my mineral line, then he's really fucked. And uh, I'm gonna save a little bit of energy here to scout him out, sniff him out, and to put my Vikings on his ass. But as you can see, he realizes his defeat and he GG's out. So in this second video, I'm going to show you it works against Protoss as well. I'm going to speed up the process. In the bottom right, we have my opponent Storm Ram. And you can see me at the uh, upper left. So uh, I'm, of course, I'm going to keep the same strategy. Build a supply depot. Have a refinery on the way. After the supply depot, instantly go for the barracks and uh, i'm actually going to add an additional refinery soon keep pumping i actually halted the progression on my barracks for a little bit so i could put this little bit of a supply depot up the thing is um, this probe here is being halted because he was put on auto move into my base uh, you saw him running by a couple of seconds ago and uh, that means that uh, the AI couldn't figure out how to get in, so he went here and st stood there for a while. And it takes a little bit of time for the player to realize that that's going on, so he, he then finally went in to move and see what was going on. After the barracks, you directly put up the factory. After the factory, directly steamroll into the starport. And when the starport's done, you're going to put a reactor to it. I'm a little bit slow this time. I guess I was busy with something else. Put a marine in this particular map on um, patrol here because you don't want to get backdoored by any zealots or stalkers knocking at your back door right there. So I already have two cyclones out as you can see. I'm going to put up the speed even a bit more. Uh, as you can see I'm now building two liberators. I'm still pumping out those marines. I'm now scanning his base to see what's going on. Uh, I see what's going on and now I'm moving in. I'm switching my rally points to the to the basis of the protos as you can see. I'm putting down the speed a little bit. Now I'm going to go uh, over to normal speed. Uh, I have the circles of the liberators up and I make them move inside my liberator circle so that they're getting sniped down really hard. Because as you can see they dish out 75 damage each shot which is a ton of damage. Simply a ton of damage. So stay away from the pylon overcharge because it hurts too much you can snipe down all of your marines with that and probably possibly even take down the cyclones as well uh, it's up for about 20 25 seconds or so it, it hurts too much so stay away from the overcharge uh, as you notice i actually sniped down 
his uh, uh, mothership for. So this time around, he realizes he's fucked because I'm slowly progressing up with my liberators. Keep pushing them forward bit by bit in, uh, in a fashion that he doesn't have any more choice but to be the out. He's screwed, he realizes it, and uh, right about now it's, it's around the time in which he starts yeah, insulting me. He should have scouted out on me instead of just insulting me. Uh, he's the one bad because he didn't scout. You see I'm also saying it, don't cry, and he goes, kids learn to play real, and uh, yeah, he decides to GG out. So in this third part, I'm going to show you how it works against Zerg. Uh, the strategy is pretty much all the same, except for one little detail I'm going to speed up to show you. As you can see, most of it is just exactly the same. Get that economy going, get two refineries when you're building the barracks. Go for the factory, finish the supply depot. Uh, you have to keep in mind that the enemy uh, Zerg will mostly go for a second base in their natural, which costs a lot of minerals. So it means that they are mainly focused around getting that economy up, which means that the only gas that they will be mining at that moment will be probably for Zerglings, as you can see the metabolic boost. Most Zerg players do this because they want these speedy Zerglings in order to make somewhat of an attack on your base. Now, the difference in this setup is because he is not going for early roaches, uh, m most of them aren't. Most of them are going for that solid economy. He's going for a lot of Zerglins. As you can see, they're moving across the map right now. So uh, have Hellions up. Get Hellions, at least four to six of them, because they do a lot of splash damage, which is really effective against Zerglins, Bailing, anything small or light. Now I'm also getting these Liberators up, uh, they'll be finished up in no time, there we go. He decides to go home with all his army because he knows that there's no way of getting in. Uh, he realizes now what's going on, as you can see, I'm going to put down the, the speed now. He realizes what's going on, he's going back to base because he knows trouble is coming his way. Uh, he tries to make the best of it with these little bane links, but he gets sniped down. As you can see, uh, there's nothing he can do right now. Um, there is a problem with these rocks, you normally you have to take them out if you can with cyclones, but in this case it's Zerg. These units all are not very effective against these rocks, so if I was deciding to go for the rocks instead first, then uh, I would give him more time to get more army or to get around or anything like that. Have your, have your command center upgraded to an orbital command, because then you can call down a mule here and repair a liberator or something as you can see uh, i'm going to call down a mule now yeah and i have this new repair this liberator this liberator position is actually really good because any larvae that are being added will instantly get sniped down as we will see in a bit saw that so it's a really good position this one will be moved forward to cover the ramp so that any reinforcements coming especially queens you can see this one has been uh, has been hurt really badly. Uh, well, that's a nice transfuse, but uh, it won't give you any uh, any bigger, I mean, any longer of a lifetime. Uh, eventually, more and more of my reinforcements will come pouring in, and we will overpower him simply by a sheer amount of number. You can see, it's uh, it's a solid thing. Anything that gets added from here will get sniped down instantly. He also creates a uh, queen uh, at some point. I believe he already did, but we didn't uh, we didn't see it. And the queen gets sniped down at the spot. So there is nothing he can do actually. Um, as you can see, I'm moving up my liberator. I'm just encircling him with liberator play. So he will have to choose to GG out quickly from now on. Because now he's getting encircled really badly. I'm detaching this liberator also, so I get maximum coverage on the ground. Um, and now he GG's out. He sees what's happening and he GG's out. So if you like my content, I know this was just a Terran-oriented mo uh, uh, I mean uh, video, but if you like my content, I'm going to share a lot more. Also Protoss, maybe even cheat on my two master races and go Zerg for a bit and try to devise a strategy that's good for those new players out there that uh, wish to go easy platinum or diamond uh, i hope you like what i'm doing if you do please give me a thumbs up 
subscribe because there's going to be a lot more videos and i hope to catch you guys in the next video bye bye guys